I brought these old pictures because it kind of brings back memories to me. Now here is a picture of little girls with what they call their doll babies. And I knew, I knew some of these little girls. I think this one here was a Shields, uh, Amelia Shields and, and uh, Long Chase and so forth. But they had their little, what they call doll babies because they're learning how to become mothers. And if you'll notice, their, ba their, 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 their little babies are held with the head on the left side. They held the babies with the head here, this way, because they realized that, that, that the little baby had, uh, had been within the, the, uh, the womb of their mother for nine months. They could feel that heartbeat going boom, 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 like that. And they realized that when their children were born, that they would hold their babies in the same fashion so that they'd still hear that heartbeat, boom, boom, boom. So it wouldn't be quite a shock. Well, now today, what do we have? I think a lot of the problems that our kids have today is they're not mothered properly. And I may be wrong because I'm a man, I'm not a woman. But what they do, they take a kid and, and they send the mother into a room and they take the baby away from her, stick him in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, some sort of a crib thing, and then she gets to look at him through a glass. In the old days, why, when that child was born, it's like in, in, in nature, the mother was the first one to get its hands on that baby. She take that baby and hold the baby like this, where the heat from her body, the sound of her heart, that journey was not such a terrible thing as the delivery from that womb where it had all the care, the love, and the tenderness that any man could, any church, any person could have. And so those are things I believe that, that uh, uh, the medical science, and I've got a lot of respect for the medical science. However, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's what causes a lot of problems in kids. They don't get that early, early, early loving, that early, early tenderness. And uh, again, again, as I said, I, I could be very wrong at that. Here's a picture of little girls. They're playing house. See with the little teepee? They'd make those little teepees like that and have their little babies. And that's how they played house. It was right right near my grandfather's place and I'd, I'd see them and once in a while I'd, they'd invite me to come over and be the father so I'd have to play the role of the father and uh, uh, I can't recall now what my duties were but <laughs> it was something now then uh, uh, when the military came in, I'm not, I'm not NASA anymore, so I can say this. When the military came in, of course, they, the thing about it is they wanted to take the, the, uh, the uh, uh, wildness out of, this, out of the people. They wanted to, this roaming business, take it out. And so they, uh, uh, they had barbed wire fences around the reservations a long, long time ago. And uh, so... They had these beautiful teepees like this. And they looked at, they noticed that everything in nature tries to be round. The trees, the sun, the moon, everything tries to be round. And if you, and if you take something of strength, if you engineers realized that the circle is very, very, very strong, and they pump millions and millions of gallons of oil down from Alaska through these tremendous, huge pipes 
You wouldn't dare put it in a square pipe because the doggone thing would fail on you. But uh, it was a round pipe. And so they knew that everything in nature tries to be round. Then from that came this. Old, beat up old log houses. No ventilation. Like this. And so what happened? Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. People died right and left. And I dare say that that uh, uh, the health care in the early days was very, very lax. This is a picture of little boys. Let's see. Well, this is me right here. That's me. You notice that we had these long sticks, long little sticks. And uh, out in the high plains country, we have the, uh, uh, the, the uh, soil is called gumbo or uh, clay. And you get that clay when it's kind of, uh, well, they have clay down in Georgia. It's sticky. And uh, you take and put a wad of that on the end of that, st uh, on the end of that wall, like this, and you go like this, and then send that uh, 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 wad of mud. So we choose sides. We choose sides to play this game because, you know, we're going to be warriors. So we'd sneak on like this, and some guy will whack like this, and whack. <laughs> get a great big piece of mud in your forehead. But the idea was that if you got hit in the head or in the chest, you had to fall down. You were dead. However, if you got hit in the arm, then you could run around with one arm down this way. <laughs> and then at the end of the game, the one who had ended up by uh, uh, the one standing up left, you might say, was the winner. Sammy Red Eagle's mother, Grandma Red Eagle, and she was a she was a young person uh, carried her little niece all the way down from the Canadian line on her back, and she had a bullet in her leg that was never never removed, and so she lived. When she was a little girl, thirteen, uh, the uh, military had driven our people. She was with Sitting Bull's bunch had driven them all up into Canada, the, the grandmother land, we call it, Canada. And when they, the, the uh, uh, disturbance was all over, and our girl, I don't think the government could, could afford doing it any longer. It was a matter of money. And so uh, they sent a runner up there and said, you can come back now because the uh, military has stopped harassing the Sioux. And again, there again, again, was money. They didn't. They run out of money, so they they came back and and Grandma Swift Claw, Grandma Red Eagle, she was 13 years old, and she had with this bullet in her leg, and she had an older sister. They had a brand new baby, brand spanking new baby, and she carried her little two-year-old or three-year-old daughter on her back, all the way from Canada, down through the whole state of. North Dakota, down to the Grand River, which is in northern South Dakota. And of course, the pain must have been severe. They had a big meeting, and they said, well, we want to recognize this girl. But she is no longer a girl, but today she becomes a woman. And so we have, in her honor and respect and so forth, her well, she will be known from now on as Wachimpi We, dependable woman. That, that's what her name became for what she had done. And our people were quick to recognize uh, our people who had uh, uh, made, made, made life better so that as a people we could have and enjoy what was left of life. A man that was so revered, so revered by our Sioux people, was this man here. 
He looks like a linebacker for the Chicago Bears, you know, big fella. His name is Gall, P-Z, <coughs> Chief Gall. Chief Gall was the one who had led the Sioux against Custer. And a lot of people, although he wouldn't admit it, said he was the one that would kill Custer. But he lived just below us, and he was the most gentle, kind person. And I believe that in today's society, you'll find the men who are really, really men. I mean real men. Big, stout, and so forth like that. They're probably the most mild, the most loving. Look after their little children, and so forth like that. But boy, they're the guys you don't want to get mad at, because if you do, wow. But I want to thank each and every one of you for your kind, beautiful, beautiful uh, concern for listening. And it does me a lot of good to be able to be here because. I'm the winner here. I draw from each and every one of you. And I go home, I'm richer than I was when I came here for the simple reason I know all you people here. You're all new friends of mine. You're all new relatives, I should say. So I'm a richer person as than I was when I came. And I want to give you, say, God bless and keep every one of you. And uh, uh, in the Sioux language, we, ha we have no words to say goodbye. It's impossible to say goodbye in the Sioux language. Instead of saying goodbye, we have a term that says, Doksha ke achinki delo, which means at another time, in another place, we'll all be together again. Thank you very much.